Let's be real, no one likes going into something completely clueless. It's frustrating and demotivating and could make you end up quitting before you even start it. That's why I'm here to give you a head start. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this video is gonna be a total mess of information on how to kick off your first year of calisthenics. If someone were to come up to me and ask me, hey, how do I start calisthenics? And I have to explain it in 10 to 15 minutes, because let's face it, that's the max attention span most of you guys have. I'm kidding, I love you all. I would tell them these eight essential things. There are two main reasons people start calisthenics. First, either they don't have access to weights, might find a gym membership too expensive. And second, they wanna be able to do cool shit like having full control over your body and defying gravity. Now, focusing on that second reason, it is in my opinion the best way to approach calisthenics. You pick a skill that you've always wanted to do and you figure out how to master it. And the beauty is that as you work towards that skill, you'll naturally start gaining the strength, flexibility and body control without even realizing. You're just reaping all the benefits along the way. Now, of course, we gotta be realistic. We're not reaching for the top of the ladder just yet. It's about finding the right skills to build the solid foundation and to make you fall in love with calisthenics. Here are a couple of good skills to kick things off with. First, we got the L-sit. It's one of the best core exercises that you can do. It doesn't just look cool, but it builds a rock solid foundation for your abs and hip flexors. Plus, it gets you used to supporting your body weight on just your hands, which is essential for more advanced exercises down the road. Second, we got the frog handstand. Kind of dumb, but it's a good way to get a feel for hand balancing. It helps you develop wrist strength and balance, and fortunately, you'll outgrow the frog stand pretty quickly and then you can move on to the real deal which is the full handstand. And the full handstand, I wouldn't necessarily call it a hard skill to learn, just a very tedious one. Theory will only get you so far and then comes the practice. You just gotta practice, practice, practice and just when you're about to give up, you're most likely close. For number three, we got the pullover. If you're a European, this one's most likely a classic exercise that you were graded on in school. Uh, the only difference right now is that we're gonna be doing it without using momentum. It helps to build great upper body strength while also improving your coordination and control and to make you more comfortable being upside down on the bar. And it might save your life one day because who doesn't find themselves hanging 200 feet from the ground at least once in their life, right? Another great way to save your life, but adding some more finesse is with a muscle up. It combines an explosive pull up and a dip into one fluid movement, building explosive strength in the upper body. Mastering this skill opens the door to tons of other advanced movements and instantly makes you look like a calisthenics pro. For the fifth skill, we got the pistol squat. It is the ultimate leg exercise. Yeah, I know, not that exciting, but it teaches you balance, flexibility, and unilateral leg strength all in one. It's perfect for building leg strength without needing any weights. Some honorable mentions are skills like the human flag or the back lever that don't really have too much application outside of just being a cool party trick. But hey, sometimes you just wanna learn something because it looks badass and that's okay too. That's why I learned it. So pick these skills as your main goal and start working towards it. And you'll be amazed at how much progress you will make along the way. I'm not gonna go into all the right progressions for each exercise for the sake of this video. Instead, you can just look it up on the web. I even have some on my own channel, uh, which you can check out as well. But in order to achieve those flashy skills, we first gotta go through the basics. I'm talking about the foundational exercise that will serve as the building blocks which will set you up for success in learning the skills. For push exercises, we got push-ups, diamond push-ups, pseudo push-ups. Okay, never mind. I'll just put them on screen. These are already a couple of good ones, but there are plenty more for you to try out and explore. I also have an exercise library, which is full of absolute beginner exercises. It's on my website. It's, it's totally free. Um, so if you're in need of some inspiration, you can check that out as well. Now, along the journey, there are gonna be plenty of exercises that are just gonna be way too hard at first, probably even some that I just mentioned, and that's totally okay. In that case, you gotta tweak the exercise. You gotta be creative, use some imagination, and also common sense. For example, with a push-up, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that changing the angle like this and placing your hands on an elevated surface makes it a lot easier to do. But it doesn't always have to be that straightforward like it is with weights, for example, where you just like lower the load and it becomes easier. No, with calisthenics, you gotta rely on a few core principles to make exercises easier or harder. First one, as I just mentioned, adjusting the angle can make a huge difference. When you change the angle of your body, you effectively reduce the distance between your center of gravity and your pivot point, thus decreasing the torque and the overall effort needed to perform the exercise. 
Second, research shows that your muscles are stronger during the eccentric or lengthening phase of a movement than they are during the concentric or shortening phase. Basically what this means is that your muscles can handle more weight whilst lowering yourself than they can whilst lifting yourself. So because we can handle more weight lowering ourselves, this means we can overload our muscles more, which will improve overall strength and thus will also translate into an improved ability of lifting yourself concentrically in the future. A third way is with complementary exercises that target the same muscle groups in a slightly different way which might also help you tackle the movement that you are currently struggling with. A good illustration is if you are working towards a pull-up, you can train Australian pull-ups as it targets the similar muscles, your lats, biceps, and upper back. And as you get stronger with these, you'll find that transitioning to a full pull-up becomes a lot easier as well. And then the fourth way to do it is by shifting your center of gravity closer to your base of support. For example, in a front lever, keeping your knees closer to your chest shifts your center of gravity closer to your hands, shortening the lever arm and requiring less strength to hold the position compared to a full front lever. Now, especially that negative part is incredibly valuable as it will allow you to build strength and control over your body that will directly transfer to the full movement. And to help you bridge that gap, there are resistance bands that allow you to go through the full range of motion of the movement with some assistance. These bands will be your best friend, and if you are considering of buying some equipment, I would definitely recommend a pair of these. Preferably even a couple of pairs that come with different resistances. They're basically a way to give you a kind of boost until you're ready to fly solo. I also quickly want to mention two effective training concepts that will help you progress. The first one is called greasing the groove. I know, stupid name. But let's say for example that you are stuck at 10 push-ups and no matter what you do, you just can't break through that plateau of doing more reps. Then this concept will help you with that. Greasing groove is all about practicing a specific exercise frequently throughout the day without pushing yourself to exhaustion. Instead of doing like a long workout session, you are doing a couple of sets here and there at a low intensity multiple times a day. Getting stronger isn't all about just building bigger muscles. It's also about training the nervous system to become more efficient at the movement. That's also the reason why the biggest guy isn't necessarily always the strongest. It could be that a smaller guy is just more efficient at using his muscles. But now back to the example, let's say you can do 10 push-ups. That will mean you should do like around sets of three to five reps throughout the day. Just think of it as casually practicing your push-ups whenever you have the time for it. And then another more fun is the pyramid scheme of training. The idea is simple. You start with a low number of reps and then with each set you increase the amount of reps before reaching a peak and then you come back down. This way you can get a lot of volume in in one single session which is good for training endurance uh, without pushing yourself to exhaustion on each set. You can push yourself a bit with the higher rep sets. Just one thing, make sure that you still have enough gas in the tank at the peak because you still have to make your way down as well. Now the second to last thing that I want to talk about is make sure that you have at least some basic flexibility going on. I'm five years deep into calisthenics and I still struggle with holding an L-sit properly or holding a pike position just because my flexibility isn't where it's supposed to be, especially in my hamstrings. It's honestly a bit embarrassing, but it's also a good reminder that flexibility plays somewhat of a role in calisthenics as well. So if you're a stiff board like me, doing a couple of stretches here and there every other day could save you from a lot of frustration down the road. Then the last couple of things that are kind of boring but I still want to go over because they're pretty important are number one, correct form. It's all fun and games to do exercise outside of your comfort zone until you get injured. So it's always very important to have the right technique with the exercises, even if that means doing fewer reps or doing an easier variation of the exercise because you can't do the full movement yet. Now, to be honest, getting injured is a pretty common thing. It's like a canon event. It will probably happen to you at least once, but if you can prevent it by using the right technique, always do so, please. Now, the second thing that I get asked a lot in the comments is, how many reps should I do per set? If you're training for strength, keep it at lower reps, higher intensity. And if you're training for endurance, keep it at lower intensity, but more reps. Number three, breathing is important during an exercise so you don't turn into a tomato and explode. More challenging exercises, this can be quite a tough thing to do to breathe properly, but as you get more proficient with the exercise itself, so will your breathing. Number four is getting enough rest. This means getting enough sleep, but it also means not training the same muscle over and over again. Rest is the period where your muscles get repaired and where they grow back stronger, given that your diet is on point. 
80% of what you look like will come from the kitchen and 20% will come from like the training itself. Now that doesn't mean that a good diet is a substitute for training. No, instead they are complements. You need to do both of them in order to get a healthy body. All right, that was the end of the video. Those were the eight essential things that I wanted to tell you guys for your first year of calisthenics. It was a bit of everything, but uh, if you found this helpful, make sure to leave a like and a subscribe is always appreciated. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. And then I'm gonna stand up now because this kind of hurts my asshole.